hundred miles. Hundred miles. Okay. I think we're back. Let's see how we're looking. Do a quick little check and then we'll just run through it. No Facebook this time. That completely jacked up the stream. <laughs> Real quick all right audio is good resolution is good everything's good we got the green light we lost everybody but that's okay <laughs> uh let me see if the chat shows up too here so yeah we're gonna try again man and when i'm gonna breeze through the things that i already said this was really kind of a, just a test stream and just a small little update um regarding this uh gabby and brian and the supposed woman there we go the chat showing up the supposed woman that I spoke about earlier. And so before everything went to hell in a handbasket, we were talking about Brittany. Now this woman has posted, this was from 2020. And I, I saw this after the video I posted earlier. I saw the poncho picture, but I didn't know that she posted this like back in March 12, 2020. And she actually tagged Roberta. Okay. And the post where this is up is removed. So she took down her post. She cleaned up the Facebook. I guess people, I guess it got to her. She cleaned up her, her entire social media. And so here's some of the things that people are saying. All right. And this woman's kind of taken up for Brian. And she stated that, you know, they were, I think her and Roberta worked together. We're going to talk about that. And she said things about Gabby like, uh, Gabby has a laundry list of mental health issues, financial irresponsibilities, and other issues Brittany Coleman said in her post defending Brian, which it's like she's passed away already, you know, like, but I guess she's trying to say that everything is not what everybody thinks it is. And this is from uh, M-E-A-W-W. It says, in a new twist to Brian Laundry Gabby Petito case, it is being claimed by many that Brian's mother, Roberta Laundrie, hated Gabby Petito. In fact, she apparently wanted her son to marry Brittany, one of her young co-workers. Brittany first emerged into prominence after she defended Brian in some domestic violence posts seeking justice for Gabby Petito. She also wrote elaborate posts in support of the Laundrie family, where she shamed Gabby time and, uh, time, and time again. Brittany claimed that, contrary to popular belief, Brian is the actual victim in their relationship and Gabby abused him. Now, unconfirmed claims have surfaced online that Roberta preferred Brittany Coleman over Gabby Petito as future daughter-in-law. Internet sleuths have dug deep into Brittany Coleman's close friendship with Roberta. One of her photos shows Brittany wearing a poncho hand knitted by Roberta, where she calls the latter the most kind and wonderful person in the world. In the whole world. It must be reminded in this context that Gabby Petito's mother, Nicole Schmidt, had previously stated Brian Laundrie's mother loved Gabby like her own daughter. So, you know, contradictions, I guess. Um, we spoke about this and I read this earlier in the video that I made earlier today. And it spoke about that. Um, it's hard to because I know Brian and he's really nice and his mother is an absolute gem. I worked with Roberta, she crocheted me a poncho she's given me so much advice throughout my time working with her and we've remained close friends since then it breaks my heart to see two families going through so much through such horrible things and the entire world is gawking and throwing their two cents in and making fun of them like we're in elementary school and nobody taught each other how to be kind to one another and it kind of goes on and on the stuff we spoke about earlier and she in one of her posts as well that's now taken down but you can see it in my previous video. She said, what I do believe is that Gabby has a laundry list of mental health issues, financial irresponsibilities, and other issues. And Brian and his family have been so supportive throughout the years. She lived in their home rent-free, both with the sister of Brian and with the parents at different times. I spoke with Roberta at length about some of the situations that had occurred in the house while they were all living together. I, it did not sound... What she said, I, I did not sound easy. I guess she meant to say it did not sound easy. The fact that people are saying Brian stole her van and used her card when I know he poured, he poured in so much of his savings for her to live her dream and to try 
and make her happy is heartbreaking. He's being treated like scum of the earth and his parents are being treated like parents of the scum of the earth because they're trying to do the right thing and protect him and anyone who thinks they wouldn't do whatever they would for their child doesn't deserve children. So she was kind of, you know, kind of going off. The post is gone now. I mean, they they were really, really coming hard for her. They even pulled up like some um, domestic situation that she's, she's been in herself. I think they found her name in an article or something. And it's just the. Uh, yeah, yeah. Brittany Coleman faced a barrage of insults and hatred from social media users following her defense of Brian Laundrie and his family. In her latest post, she slammed the incessant criticism and defended her stance, equating her online abuse with bullying. It makes me feel pretty bad that people have nothing better to do than jump on the bandwagon and say hurtful things to people who are closer to the damage than they will ever be. Seems like some weird phenomena that I'm kind of just letting go instead of deleting my post because I already know the world is an ugly place. So she goes on and on. We covered this earlier too. This was the original post here and these are the this is what she said under that post this was in 2020 march she says roberta is the most kind wonderful person in the whole world my one in a billion friend hand made this gorgeous and super cozy poncho with removable cow neck just for me i can't thank you enough for such an amazing gift so many compliments on your craft craft womanship and ironically the splotches of brown you were afraid to you were afraid you might regret seem to be complimented almost as much as the poncho itself. Every time I see it several times a day, it puts a huge smile on my face and I wear it. it and when I wear it, it gives me a huge, gives me, gives me a hug full of love you put into it. Whatever. I'm so blessed to have you in my life. So, I mean, people have been asking and people have been wondering, you know, where's the friends? Where's the family? What, where are all these people that knew the guy? And I guess somebody's kind of come forward. And this is probably why people have not really come forward because I'm not surprised at the response that she got. I mean, she was getting ratioed to hell, like really, really bad. So that's down. I wish she would stop messaging me. <laughs> now let's talk a little bit about we're going to talk a little bit about the corner and then we're going to talk about a little bit of this whole situation from earlier today with the, the, the hunt for Brian Laundry. Brian is everywhere. Everybody's hunting for him, actively searching for white bald men. We're going to talk about that in a second too. So Dr. Brent blue resigns from the hospital post. This is really not a big deal, but I guess he, they made him resign because he was using his personal computer on the job, I guess. Um, Tenton County coroner, Dr. Brent blue is in talks with his lawyer and plans to negotiate with St. John's uh, health after he returns from a family trip to Italy for the past year, blue worked as blue worked for the Jackson hospital as a contracted physician last Friday on October 8th. Here he said he was called by his supervisor, director of physician services, Jim Barrett, who reportedly told blue he couldn't continue his, using his personal computer at the hospital. There's no policy bearing hospital contractors from using their personal computers. St. John, uh, John's chief communications officer, Karen Conley told Jackson Hole daily. She declined to comment further on the matter. Some drama going back and forth. The next day he emailed St. John's interim CEO, David to formally announce the termination of his contract effective 10 February, 10, 22, 2022 to comply with a hundred and day 120 day required notice. So they're going back and forth. Blue then listed reasons he should be allowed to have his personal computer, including that he used that device at the hospital for the entire 13 months he had been contracted with St. John's. I wonder if all this publicity and the press and, and, and doing the, you know, the press conference, if, I don't know, maybe he got on somebody's bad side over there or they didn't like whatever he had to say, or maybe they didn't like that. He spoke to a couple of different media, uh, outlets as well. I don't know. I don't know. He also said he used his computer to submit patients, FAA physical exams and to perform telehealth visits. 
I was given a verbal guarantee by previous CEO Paul that my contractual agreement with SJH would not interfere with my duties as Teton County Coroner. He wrote in an email. In his response the next day, Robertson copied Barrett, the hospital physician's service administrator board, uh, and all those people he copied. Robertson did not respond to Blue's concerns, but acknowledged the notice of termination. He also reminded Blue that his non-disparagement, confidentiality, and non-compete agreements would continue to be legally binding after February 10th. So he can't say nothing bad, nothing crazy, can't talk sideways. Two days after Robertson's Sunday reply, Blue held a press conference to explain the results of, oh, this was after, uh, of Gabrielle Petito's autopsy, one of the nation's most high-profile homicide cases. Then on Thursday evening, Blue announced his departure from St. John's in a public Facebook post. And that just seems kind of like, didn't they just tell him, okay, don't do it again? Why get rid of him? In a follow-up interview with The Daily, Blue said he had no intentions of leaving St. John's prior to the call with Barrett, which said forced the decision. I can't function as a county coroner unless I have computer access during the day, he said. It's never interfered with the number of with the number or quality of patients I've seen. There were no complaints that there were no complaints that said, gee, he's doing corner work and he's not seeing patients. That was never stated. It's not clear why the computer would have become an issue all of a sudden. As Blue and that's true, it's been for a while he's been doing it. As Blue put it, but but it did come for but it did come just four days before the hospital on Monday reopened its urgent care center in the TJ Maxx Plaza. At the same time, Blue was working on a highly publicized potato case, though he doesn't believe there's a correlation between the work and Barrett's call. As for why he went public with the announcement, and some people have been asking that too, like why, you know, or why not just you know, put out the piece of paper that they did, you know, why go on TV and then open it up like that, which is something I haven't really seen before. And his answer was, I thought my physician, sorry, I thought my patients had the right to know what's going on, especially patients of mine who are major donors to the hospital. Really? Oh, I guess since he's leaving. As a Friday, Blue's Facebook post had garnered nearly 100 comments from people appreciative of his service as a physician and coroner. So he's going to continue serving as the elected county coroner, which is separate from St. John's through the end of 2022. He's required by contract to work with the hospital until February. And so yada, yada. The other thing, too, just really quickly, um, and this is from Crime Online. It's kind of weird because it seems like there's some sort of, I don't know. I guess there's an election process. So it says here, I'm prohibited by contract from saying anything derogatory about the hospital, but you would think with all the decent publicity that they would be honored to be associated with me. Nothing above is derogatory. It is just factual. The resignation came just days after Blue released the autopsy results for Gabby Petito and had appeared on national media outlets talking about the case. Blue was elected the county's coroner in 2014 and won re-election in 2018, according to the newspaper. His current term expires January 1st, 2023. What? Hold on, what? Yo, you guys see this? La, no, don't say that. La, no, no, no. Am I reading this right? As Crime Online reported last week, yeah? Blue has a prior domestic violence arrest in which he's accused of sh shooting a gun at his, at his then wife's car. What? <laughs> what? No, come on, bro. You pulled everybody in with that message with domestic violence at the end of your speech there when you gave us the autopsy report. What? 
See, that surprised me right there. That's interesting. Good reporting by Crime Online. So we're gonna we're gonna read that real quick too. But uh Okay, no, we know this already. Okay. So yeah, let's read this a little bit. According to a 2014 article by the Jackson Hole News and Guide, Teton County Coroner Brent Blue was initially denied a concealed carry permit renewal due to a prior domestic violence arrest involving his then wife. The news outlet reported that in 1999, Blue was arrested for shooting a gun at his then wife's car to stop her from driving away. Bruh! I did not know that. I did not know that, bro. And we're, and we're just seeing this whole speech uh, uh, with the with the press conference. I mean, not the situation. The woman's not funny, but like you know, when he was talking about it, you're like, wow. Like you know, everybody's like drawn in. Oh my god, this dude over here allegedly shooting at the wife. According to the news and guy, Blue was charged with a felony, aggravated assault before Teton County Prosecutor Steve reduced the charge to a misdemeanor and reckless endangerment. Looking out, right? Looking out for each other. Because now he's elected or whatever. That's weird. It's kind of interesting. The Division of Criminal Investigation DCI denied Blue's request to renew his concealed permit, which he filed in November 2014. The agency followed the recommendation of Teton County Sheriff Jim, according to the news guide. Not only did Blue request a judicial review of DCI's ruling, but Witchman and former Sheriff Bob Zimmer wrote letters endorsing Blue's concealed carry permit, saying his actions in 1999 and currently do not represent a threat to public safety. It kind of seems like these people, all these people kind of know each other. They help you out. They look out for you. They endorse you. They write for you and all this kind of stuff. And I wonder what the, the situation was with the previous wife. This other stuff we know. Wow. Say it ain't so. I found this crazy post too that I'm not even going to really get into on Reddit. I, I, I just saw it. I'm like, what is going on? I try to, <laughs> the things that go on on Reddit. Oh, this is supposedly that meme subreddit, I think. There's people, there's people that support Brian. There, there's sub memes and stuff like that. And there's people like, look at this auto moderate thing. It's what I wanted to show you as well. Brian Laundrie is a victim of domestic abuse who is being unfairly maligned in the court of woefully uninformed public opinion. And her criminal charges against him need to be weighed in the court of law and nowhere else. This community is dedicated to seeing that Brian receives the treatment that he is entitled by the Constitution of the United States of America, which is innocence until proven guilty. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, there's people on here right now that they're, uh, you know, they're rooting for Brian. Uh, so, oh, let me check out the super chats, and then we'll we'll touch on this little article I found as well, the New Yorker, about the situation earlier with the lookalike, which to me kind of I was like, damn, even the feds. Are kind of like i mean at least they're trying to do something or whatever at least they're taking sighting seriously but at the same time i mean i just was trying to picture what it would be like i'm on i'm, I'm hiking i'm on a trail then I'm, I'm resting at this place with i guess his girlfriend he, and, and out of nowhere you hear knocking them boom Brian, Brian, ah, Brian, Brian, get down get down and pulling out a gun and everything everything's like what the hell is going on gun to the head and then we're going to read the article, but they literally, they looked, I guess they looked for the pointy part of his ear and, and to match up and see if it was like Brian. And of course the tattoos didn't match either. What a fiasco, man. Um, and again, sorry about the stream earlier. It was kind of a test. I'm not even going to bother with Facebook, unfortunately for now, I'm just going to be posting little clips there, but I, I apparently, I guess I can't stream to both places. Um, Superwoman, thank you for the super chat. Can you please post the link for this article? Sure. Uh, I'll put. Are you talking about the domestic violence thing? I'll put it in the in the description for you. Give me one second. 
Okay. I just added it to the description so you can, whenever you have a chance, you can click it there and you'll be able to uh, read it. It's interesting. And I should click the other articles too that they referenced, that they cited, because maybe there's more information. But we'll do the, the, the lookalike first and then we'll backtrack. Uh, simply simplify success greatness. This man still, this man still have his conscience and he know too much. So they want to flip on him and tell lies because we're going to heard the truth. Thank you for the super chat. That's right. Chris, do you think Gabby, thank you for the super chat. Do you think Gabby was also violent towards Brian based on the witness testimony of Moab and Brittany's comments? Um, I think anything's possible, man. I, I, it's really, I don't see, I don't know. I, I, I'm basing my information off of what we saw on the camera. Also what we know now ahead of time, as far as the strangulation, um, also the restaurant incident, you got to take all those things into factor where it was reported that he had like an outburst and stuff like that. I think that that day where the police stop was made, and I've said this multiple times, somebody should have been arrested. Those police, they felt that she was the aggressor. And if that's how they felt, then they should have made the arrest. Because then, I don't know, they could have worked things out. There was, a, there was supposed to be a court date scheduled online. Hindsight is really hard to go to take into factor the hindsight, or try not to take into factor hindsight, but the way they felt... You know, and a lot of people feel different, but the way they felt, they felt she was the aggressor. So somebody that they should have been arrested, and if that's how they felt, I think that she maybe should have been arrested. I still don't think that would have changed the outcome. Some people think it maybe could have because, oh, maybe she would have called her mother, even though people have said, well, she did call her mother, supposedly. I don't even know if she really did call her mother when the police stopped her. Supposedly she was on her phone and supposed to be talking to her mother. Um, I don't, I don't know that that would have changed the events of, you know, that took place after the fact, you know, and, and the cop was talking about the, the laws, right. Or, or regulations or whatever it is. There is a reason that it's supposed to be. You have to arrest somebody because in case they make a mistake or whatever, because they, they went, they went out of the way. So nobody got arrested. You know, I, I guess they were trying to do the right thing, but it didn't turn out to be the right thing. <laughs> Floyd said, let's go Brandon F. Joe B. Oh, I figured out the, the Brandon thing. I'm not going to go into it right now, but I, somebody sent me a link. I'm so behind. I haven't been following none of that stuff. Apparently, there's like a top hit song, and that Brandon thing is a reference for Joe B. Biden. So I didn't know that th until today. I was like, oh, that's what everybody was talking about. I was like, who, who are they talking about? Who's Brandon? Ha habit. Habit. Said, God, I want to fight Poncho Lady, L-M-A-O. Uh, Floyd said, there's video evidence of Gabby admitting to hitting Brian. Gabby probably got sick of her abuse and snapped on Gabby. I don't know what happened, man. Like I said, it seems to like maybe she was potentially covering for him. I don't think that we know all the details. All that I know for sure is that she's dead. And it was by strangulation. And this guy's on the run. You know what I'm saying? Like, um... Terry Oliver, thank you for the super chat. I'm completely freaked out by the facts in this case. Good looking out, Mel. JHC, this is so whack. Thank you. Appreciate it, Terry. Natasha, thank you for the super chat as well. All right, so let's get into this article. There's people out there supporting. Uh, that's why I wanted to show you guys this. Hey, there's people out there that, you know, they believe. They believe in Brian. Or, or at least, I don't know. Bounty hunting for Brian Laundry in a land of lookalikes. White bald men everywhere. Amateur sleuths speculated that the fugitive is on the run on the Appalachian Trail. Bad news for the archetypical long distance hiker. Skinny, pale, bald, and bearded. Severin Beckwith and Anna Bretman, a young couple from Ithaca, New York, have been hiking from Georgia to Virginia on the Appalachian Trail since late September in western North Carolina. After a few days of hard rain and little sleep, they decided to take a break from the woods. A shuttle delivered them to the lodge at the Fontana Village Resort, a rustic retreat two miles off the trail where they ate lunch and lay down for a mid 
day nap. Knocking awoke them. There was a muffled voice outside their door. It burst open before Beckwith could unlock it. Bang that shit in. Next thing I see is a bunch of guys with riot shields with U.S. Marshals written on it, written on them. Beckwith said, handguns pointed at my face. Bretman said, Bretman was still in the bed. A marshal helped get her dressed as they handcuffed Beckwith, still in his underwear, and they took him out to the hallway. He had a hunch why this was happening. I really hoped I was right, he said. Beckwith resembles Brian Laundry, a fugitive and a person of interest in the killing of his fiance Gabby Petito, in the way that most white male long distance hikers resemble Laundry. Skinny, pale, and with a shaved head and beard. There's a lot of them. I never noticed how many of these like bald guys there are until the Brian Laundry case. You see them everywhere. Somebody actually sent me a picture today. Did I save it? Yeah. They were in, they were just going out for the neighborhood in a walk, and she she was like, "Oh my god, like this is bald guy. This does not look like Brian." But like everybody is just on the lookout, taking pictures. I had a guy, a subscriber, I don't know if you remember Anthony. He sees this white bald guy like coming out of a store or something, so he starts recording him, and he's like recording the guy getting his vehicle and all sort of stuff. This dude starts chasing him, like the the video. I don't know if it's still up on YouTube. He starts chasing this guy. So this other guy starts bobbing and weaving through traffic. Anthony's following him. And at one point, the guy just lost him. I, this guy probably thought he was being like stalked or somebody wanted to kill him. And this guy's like just hightailing it. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Um, all right. All right. So let's continue. Uh, the preponderance of such men perhaps has been has made the Appalachian Trail a locus of the manhunt among them. Amateur set. There's also the fact that Laundry has been known to hike the trail. And that is and that is regarded mostly by those who've never sorry, what the hell? And that is regarded mostly by those who've never hiked it as a place to go if you want to disappear. An engineer from Florida was ninety nine point nine nine percent sure that he saw Laundry looking wigged out near the trail. I wonder what happened to that guy. We spoke about that on Discord. What happened to the guy? That said, he was 99.99% sure that he saw Brian Laundry. And I wonder if it was this guy. Could it have been that guy? Days earlier, someone else had clocked Beckwith as resembling Laundry, but the marshals had seen more than a passing similarity. One of them touched the side of Beckwith's head and noted that he had, as Beckwith said, a notch in the upper part of my inner ear. Just, just like his. So he's like looking at his ear. Imagine that like the feds come in your shit. They break the damn door. Ah! And then hold on. So, sir, we got to verify you. Show me your ears. And he's like checking out his ears and look. They get guns pulled it, pointed at his head. Sir, just checking his ears. All right. All right. Does it match? Should we get a match here. Insane. On top of that, Beckwith and Brettman had booked their room with a credit card linked to a New York ID. Petito was from New York, which I guess was good enough motive to come in. That's all it takes. But Beckwith didn't have Laundry's hand tattoos. His ID didn't have Laundry's name on it either. The marshals fingerprinted Beckwith. They had to use our hotel Wi-Fi password because they were having trouble with their Bluetooth fingerprint. Damn. Kind of jacked up thing they got going on. And suggested that he shave his beard, which he did but immediately regretted it. So it was for real that these guys are like, yo, you should shave your beard. Damn. Because I have much less of a chin than laundry does. They told me the couple that they now had a, they told the couple that they now had a good story to tell. Then they left just like that. Damn. I wonder if there's any body cam. Ear ID. <laughs> Jack is at ear ID. Oh my God. There's people that, uh, there's also that I spoke about yesterday a little bit, Christy Alley on Twitter. She said she believes that this guy's in his still at home, Brian, like in some sort of contraption, some sort of, uh, I don't know, in between the, 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 what do you call it? Let's see, Christy Alley. Let me find out exactly what she said. She actually got on the news for saying what she said. I saw an article earlier. 
talking about her. I was like, oh, lot. I don't think Christy cares, though. But. Yeah, she said, I think Brian Laundrie's in his house. When the FBI went in, they didn't go in with dogs. I think he was either not there at the moment or in a crawl space. That's the word she used, crawl space. I literally think he's in there. That would be insane. There's people still thinking to the bunker thing. People are still talking about the bunker thing. People really believe there's a bunker in the ground there. We were talking about this on Discord as well. People really believe there's a bunker there and he's like just, or just in the grass, like laid out. Let me show you another image. This is from a, a really good person, a person that's really good at doing Photoshop. I think her name is Jillian. People believe this guy still, well, this is the front, but in the back, they believe that Brian's out there in the, in the flower bed, just laying out in the grass. Uh, okay too many windows so who alerted the marshals to the presence of a laundry lookalike beckwith remembered a moment earlier that day at the fontana lake mariana or marina marina where they'd gone to call the shuttle an employee had responded strangely to his request to use the phone he'd also it turned out, I don't know what that means. He'd also, it turned out, taken Beckwith's picture and passed it along with the authorities. Damn, so they're just snapping pictures. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Report this. We got him. Taking Beckwith's picture and passed it along to the authorities. A marshal showed the picture to Beckwith after kicking in the door. Damn, bro, that's wild. They had a little side by side, Beckwith said. It was Brian and then me. On the phone calling to get the shuttle. Damn. For their unique troubles, the lodge gave Beckwith and Brett Mann a free night stay in a room with a working lock. Oh, the lock didn't work? And a free breakfast. It was a buffet, Beckwith said. We took as much as we could. A few days later, Maria Guzman, who runs Standing Bear Farm Hostel, which I think we've talked about that. Fix that right here. A week's walk down the trail in Tennessee met Beckwith and Bretman while out for a hike. They told her the story. He does look like laundry, which a lot of people in the comments said he didn't, but apparently people believe he does. I mean, enough for them to call. But so do thousands of people. A fellow hiker attempted to give Beckwith a trail name as, a, as is customary for long-distance hikers, the fugitive. This was Beckwith. This was Beckwith felt a bit too on the nose. Instead, he went with not Brian, which he said basically covers it. Guzman promised the couple a free pizza if they stayed at her hotel, which they ended up doing. Their luck was their luck was turning. <coughs> Guzman mentioned the laundry lookalike to her friend Tina and Xander, a local couple who were also searching for the fugitive. There's people out there, bro. There's people out there, Brian. I just imagine the reward money, you know, especially Florida. I mean, that wasn't in Florida, but especially Florida, you know, people want some money. They want to get their reward money, that cash, want to re-up, dose up again. You know what I'm saying? A lifetime supply of whatever they need. There's people out there just on there, you know, searching. Similarly, McDowell are neither amateur sleuths nor government agents. They run a local bounty hunting outfit called Predator Hunter Nation. Ooh. Dwayne Chapman, a.k.a. Dog the Bounty Hunter, was also on Laundry's trail recently until he injured his ankle. Most peas similarly said, describing their quarry, but not exclusively, she went on, there are sightings all over Hartford, a nearby town, and nobody's paying attention. She added, our friend Hunter, he saw him at Sicko in Hartford in a brown Ford escape. The Bounty Hunters discussed the reward being offered for information leading to Laundry's capture, Last I heard, it was 170000 What that reward money, boy? Brian. Brian. I got to pay some bills. 
180 now. McDowell said that's half the reason people are even looking. Ah, but not us. We're looking for this guy because he's a predator. He paused and went on. He's pretty generic looking dude, though really people say I look like him too. Damn. Damn, even this guy's bald. Charles Bethia, a staff writer at the New Yorker. Damn. <laughs> Bruh, let me check the super chats real quick. And thank you guys for coming tonight. I appreciate it. I really should have been working on this other story, which I did start, but I was like, let me just come on and say hi. Okay. Um, 10 Edwina 10. Thank you for the super chat. My theory about the phone situation is that they shared a phone since they lived a minimalist lifestyle. He did have a cell phone, but using with Wi-Fi, which I, I heard that theory as well, that it probably wasn't connected. He just had Wi-Fi. I think that's why they were always fighting. Mm. Let me check. Let's see here real quick, too. I want to see if they could, uh, we could just look at the articles real quick, the initial articles. That was pretty much the same. Witchman went further stating that the only, that not only was Blue not a threat, but that the case was sensationalized for political reasons due to Blue's public notoriety. I don't know, man. I guess he shot at the wife to stop her from leaving. He was allowed to judge reverse his denial, but won't explain why. Denial due to the 1999 court case in which Blue was accused of shooting a gun at his ex-wife's car to keep her from fleeing during an argument. Bro, that's crazy as shit. You know you're nuts. You know you're doing something like that. Just, oh, I'm just going to shoot this thing. You can't leave me. No. You know you're crazy on some type of crap like that. When you're doing something like that, that's nuts. Though he was initially charged for aggravated assault, a felony, Teton County Prosecutor Steve Wichman reduced the charge to reckless endangerment, a misdemeanor. Blue pleaded guilty and served probation sentence after which his firearms had been confiscated during the case were returned to him. And then he was allowed to carry again, concealed carry permit. If I was her, you'd have to just leave, I guess. Damn. So that's kind of interesting, man. The, just the whole thing of this guy is, is up on here on TV talking about DV. And he, this dude actually shot at his wife and did all this craziness for her, to stop her from leaving. You know? Uh, by reducing the charge, they save his medical license, Pamela said. It's interesting. I mean, I guess everybody has something. It's just weird that he's the perpetrator talking like that. Waving around shooting a gun at somebody or at the vehicle. He's amazing, man. We love him. Amazing. What's his name? Something blue, right? Blue... Mm, check this out. What is this? Well, I don't know. It's the sun, but let's let's see what this. Oh, okay. Let's buy a little something else. A little something else. He shot at his wife's car to stop her from leaving. Apparently, in 1999, homeboy got a crazy pass too. Um, let's check this out. 
drug-fueled rage. Brian Lager may have had a psychotic break or been on drugs when he flew into a rage at Gabby. Psychologist says, I guess this is, this is her opinion, I guess. An urgent message. Like he was in a rage. Yeah. In a true rage. Um, impulse ridden rage, which, you know, either, I mean, he could have been in the throes of some psychotic something, I don't know, drugs. That's it. An urgent message oh. to anyone with type 2 diabetes or pre diabetes. All right, we get it. Did the son just like pay a psych, uh, psych, uh, psychologist? Like, hey, we'll pay you this amount of money. Just come on and say this, and we'll take the clip. Thank you so much. You do that. So I saw somebody asking about the whole um, uh, lawsuit. I don't know what's going to happen with that. That's a good question. I guess they just want to mess with Christopher Laundry. I don't I don't know what that's going to do. The other thing too with that is I saw people talking about like but those women that put the sign up aren't even from Florida. From what I'm hearing, the person that's suing, I don't know if this is true, 100% true. I heard that that person is the person that's been holding that bullhorn. The protester that's been holding the bullhorn and like, you know, talking and stuff. I hear that's her. Supposedly, allegedly, you know, I don't know, but it's weird. The forty dollars is like, what are we gonna do with that, right? Is he even gonna show up to court for that? It's not even. It's not like he even has to go to court. It's. I think it's an online Zoom thing, and you don't need a lawyer for that forty dollars. <laughs> like, eh, here, what, what? You know, do you even show up to that? I don't know. Yep, Andrea. No, it's a JLR guy. Okay. Well, you know, I hope too that nobody gets hurt in the process as far as this reward bunny, because I could see a whole lot of people like, yo, we got to go find this guy. We need to, you know, come up, you know, make a little money, whatever we got to do, what we got to do. You know, hopefully somebody doesn't get hurt in the process. That Andrea Bullhorn, she was done for strangling two people. What? All this is mental. It's on Twitter with her police record. Oh, no, no, I can't. I can't with all these people, man. We just found out about the coroner. Please, no, not that. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I I don't know what's up with that man. I don't know what's up with the forty dollars for the sign. <laughs> Flood the courts with lawsuits about the dirty laundries. That lawsuit would be dismissed because it has no merit and the woman could be responsible for their lawyer fees. Yeah, I don't I don't see that just I don't see it going through. I really don't. But anyway, man, I guess I'm gonna end the live stream. Thank you guys so much for coming through. I just wanted to pop in quickly. Unfortunately the Facebook thing didn't work, so I'm just gonna stick to YouTube and I'll post clips on Facebook. Uh and then maybe in the future we'll try it up again. Um, but yeah, I just want to hear you guys thoughts a little bit about this whole, um, situation. Brian Laundry, coming for you, boy. We coming for you. Laundry. And I don't think that guy's in the Carlton Reserve, man. I don't know. I don't know. 
But good night, man. Yeah, you guys have a good night. Rest up. All right, peace.